Go ahead. I go asking questions like, what is normal? I don't know. Um, but Leanne, don't go back across. Okay. Um, to me, I also agree with Carlos, but like, you could see like normal or whatever, but like, hold on, let me see where I'm going in. Um, I think it could be in a deeper level because to the people that you know, like you, you think they're normal, but there's like more layers to them and you don't know about it. So like whatever you see right in front of you, they're like normal to you, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. So people are like ogres? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> and ogres are like onions? <laughs> Yeah. No, I understand it. Yeah, so, so it might be that the, the parts that you see, the superficial levels, are the, are the normal parts. But what's down below? It could be deeper. What's that? It could be deeper, like, uh, it could be, I don't know, I don't want to sue people. Yeah. There's just something like to add on what Mom said. Like, I guess it's gotten to the point where we think weird people are normal now. Hmm. So, like, so everyone you meet obviously has a weirder side or something that's like not normal. Mm -hmm. So like every time you see a stranger, you could immediately assume like what if they're a dumpster, you see them a different way, or they have a bad temper, you would imagine them some, someone as a completely different person, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's something kind of at the beginning of what you're saying about almost like, we, who, when we meet people nowadays, like who is normal? Is that, is that shifting? Yeah. As I would say, you don't know a person's true nature or who they are. They have closed doors. We don't associate with them that thing. <coughs> also, to add on, people have different definitions of normal depending on age and how they were raised, I guess. Hmm. Well, how do you, what do you mean by that? That's an important point. The last part there, about how people think their age and when they, when they were raised and what normal is. Because depending on your timeline, uh, let's say back then, most um, LGBTQ people weren't accepted because it wasn't normal. And then nowadays, it's a lot more normal for people to understand. So there might be something there about, about normality. We might think of it almost like a, a commonality as well. Not in the sense that we share something in common, but just that you see it more often. And so when something becomes... Uh, what we, the, <coughs> The process is called normalization. When you start seeing something more, it becomes more normal, and then it just kind of becomes part of everyday life. Yeah. Um, for example, like no one knows who you truly are, so things that you think is weird, other people might see as weird. Like what? <laughs> like, what do you want to, like, tell me about one of your friends. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but just something that would, would it kind of point to what you're talking about. Okay, um, a friend? You eat these things in these orders and you know that. God, you're that right. type of person? Oh, I am, absolutely. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to tell you what, alphabetically or chronologically? I don't want to listen to Which one? Like, see, like, see other people think that's weird, but you think that's normal. See? Well, it is normal. But people who make stuff. Oh, yeah. so you oh, take a player. Oh, I thought you did. Listen. Hey. I have a PhD. Dr. Scanlon said it is normal. He's going to graduate when you graduate. Exactly, that's the moral of the story. If I've got one, y'all can get two. Yeah. We don't have nothing. I just think it means like we don't know normal people because we don't know what normal is. 
So, you guys are on that. Um, and so, it creates this weird, I shouldn't say weird because I guess it isn't, it creates this normal abnormality, maybe is a way of thinking about it. So, when we say that somebody is, is normal, what kind of things do we, are we saying? So, what, what do we consider to be this? Or what's widely considered to be this? Yeah. Being happy. Being happy. Yeah. If you're not happy, you're not normal. <laughs> oh, maybe you're not. <laughs> we are. Girl. Right? I need to ask off this one. <laughs> Everything's great. <laughs> I, I love going to the store and saving a lot of money because stuff isn't there. Um, what else would we say is, is, is considered normal? Wearing a mask. Wearing your ass. Oh my god. Honestly, it's great. Yeah. No. I walk into stores and, and I'm not wearing a mask, and people look at me like I'm either a beast or a god. They're not sure which it is. Literally, yeah. Yeah. Serious person. And that's why when you find somebody who's getting really upset, it's a good idea to just tell them to calm down. Stop being weird, calm down. <laughs> works really well. I'm attacking you. No, I, I, it also I, I, works really well with grabbing a cat by its tail and pulling it. Oh, oh, that works well, well too. Oh, that's not normal, huh? <laughs> Do you abuse your cat? Me? I don't abuse them. <laughs> uh, we'll call it non, uh, non dark humor, I guess, is normal too. Oh, mm. <laughs> it, it is normal. You're just weird. For the rest of us. <laughs> but I wonder if it's specific. I'm sure some of you looking at this list and you're like, well, she said, that's not normal. She said, well, that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal. <laughs> What's that? Do we paint a picture of what normal is to us? Yes. Because we paint a picture of what normal is to us. Because if we don't have some, some level of, of normality, things fall apart. Like, you know? And so it, it's, all, it's almost that we get forced. And, it, and the thing is, is, I mean, I guess in a sense there is something there where like, we like to blame things on society and say, oh, you know, well, society forces us to do this. But society doesn't force me to do anything except for stay white and die. Okay. Everything after that is a choice. You know, I, I, I can do, but the thing is, are we, are we willing to live with the, with the consequences of, of those kinds of things? If you have dark humor, then, you know, you're going to laugh a lot more, but then people are also going to look at you like you're strange, and they're going to ask you if you abuse your cats. <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> <laughs> and then, right now, I mean, and I'm thinking back to like just two years ago, if you came in here wearing a mask, <laughs> I, would, I would die for your backpack. You know? <laughs> if you understand, you understand. In other words, you know, the only reason you're wearing a mask two years ago is you're coming in here to shoot the place up. <laughs> you know? Which I understand why you, why you would wear a mask. We're going to be able to identify the body afterwards, right? Yeah. After, your, after your dramatic murder-suicide murder spree? Oh, sorry, sorry. Not supposed to do that. You're right. No, Non-dark humor. <laughs> but, but now, like I said, if you walk around with a mask, people, I mean, <laughs> I remember actually at you know, the beginning of the whole thing, during the initial lockdown period, people would be walking down the street, just going for a walk, and people would be walking down the sidewalk, and people would see me, and they would cross the street to get away from a non-masked person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, really yeah. yeah, really. Yeah. Now, I, yeah, that's kind of like, huh. And we'll leave it that, because otherwise I'm going to go into more dark humor about that. Yeah, I'm just starts fighting them. <laughs> more free space for you. I, I, I did tell you I had one incident like that. But for the most part now, like I said, I walk into to, to stores, and people are pretty whatever, they don't, they don't seem to really care. But I keep hearing stories from other people who don't wear masks when they go into Walmart, and they keep talking about how they get the stink eye and people they go glare at them. I've never encountered that. I've never experienced that. Oh, right. yeah. Have you? See, and I, think, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just oblivious to it. You know? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's a good thing, because maybe it contributes to this. Because a lot of times our happiness is dependent on how other people see us. Am I being accepted by these folks? Am 
might not be accepted. There's a lot of anxiety that goes along with this. And this is kind of the, the, the big one here. But that's the funny thing. That's the whole facade. That's, that's the show. In other words, we recognize, listen, um, if everybody just, if you just do you and everybody does themselves and we're all going to be weird and different and strange, we're not going to have a glue that holds us together. You know? And, that, and there has to be some kind of a glue that holds society together. There have to be some things that we have in common. There have to be some things that we agree on, like a foundation. And then, you know, maybe if you've got some dark humor or whatever, then, then it's fine. I mean, even like the communist thing, why is it that we want people to be calm? Because people scare us when they're not, <laughs> you know? And so that's the thing, it's like, if, you, if you're talking to me, I'm sorry, if you're not talking to me, if you're yelling at me, ah, I can't have a conversation with you. Now it's, you know, hey man, calm down. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm not coming down, why are your hands up? And now we can't really go, we really can't do any Calmness is something that we agree on, because that's the thing that allows us to move forward rationally. And so rationality is the thing that we kind of hold onto as a glue that holds us together. And so, I mean, so I guess you could think of it almost like a type of a, of a Venn diagram, you know? These are the things that we might say are normal. And even if they're not really like normal normal, they're things that we pretend to be. And so what's happening in here is, is the facade. We're pretending to be these things. But not necessarily for a bad reason. We're pretending to be these things so that we can keep this whole society thing going, if that makes sense. So it doesn't have to be a terrible thing. Like we'll, we'll say things like, you know, ah, people are fake. Okay, yeah, that's true, but a lot of times we're fake for this reason. So for example, if, you're, um, if you walk in here, and every morning I ask you guys, I, I say, good morning, everyone. And some of you guys are like, good morning. Some of you guys completely ignore me, which is incredibly rude, by the way. <laughs> I'm an extreme introvert, so the very fact that I can get up in front of a class and say, good morning, is a lot for me. And then some of you still get <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> Not so good. Um, but I mean, when you come in, I ask you, how you know, how how y'all how y'all doing? And some people will say, oh, good. Maybe you know, I'm sure you've heard me say, I don't believe you. <laughs> like, good. Why are you saying good? For that. <laughs> but if I ask you, you know, oh, what's wrong? Okay, and you start telling me everything that's wrong. Um, Curiosity, if you're willing to raise your hand. How many of you guys have something going on in your, in your life right now that's wrong? You know? Okay, well, this is going to take me all morning if I have to go person by person by person by person. <laughs> I can totally you know, wrong. Let's deal with it. Now, and it's not that I don't care. Um, I, I do. I genuinely do. And that's one of the things that's difficult about teaching because whatever is going on in your life right now, like what, two thirds of you raised your hands right now? And whatever is going on in your life right now <clears throat> might have you distracted. And so you come in here and you're distracted. And I'm trying to talk to you about Alfred Adler. Who cares about Alfred Adler? When you have all these other things in your life that are going on that are, that are kind of wrong, you know? And so when that happens, you're, you're checked out of society, then you can't really participate in the class. And so we just go, fine, <laughs> good, you know? And then there are some people, some close friends maybe, who we do allow in, who we do let them, to, we do let them see what's really going on in our lives. Um, people we trust. <clears throat> By the way, um, there's a, there are several studies that I'm seeing coming out right now. There's, there's just another one last week that talked about the benefits of talking to strangers and telling strangers what your problems are. So like you're on a trolley and someone's like, hey, how's it going? They sit down next to you. And you're kind of like, ah, maybe, uh, I've uh, got some things going on. And if the person asks you, like, what? You can tell them. Well, yeah. Why? Because you're never going to see them again. <laughs> so it gives you the opportunity to get some things off of your chest, have some deep conversations. And, and it's especially valuable right now because like, we're so quick to try to you know, chop each other down for saying the wrong thing or, or having the wrong ideas or, or whatever. And so the, the problem with that is that you, you, you therefore have to be afraid of saying a wrong thing, which means you don't have the opportunity to explore new ideas, if, if that makes sense. And so, in other words, we're creating a society that's so constrictive and so restrictive that we're telling you it's not normal to have those kinds of ideas or to have those kinds of thoughts, you know? And so, therefore, you never get a chance to explore them. But with strangers, you can explore them. You piss off a stranger, you, you, you offend a stranger, what's that person going to do? Fuck you. 
fight them, but if they want to, they can be close. I mean, it had, it had to be pretty bad, you know, to, to, to get them to, to that point. Maybe they'll, they'll take out their camera, you know. This person just said, you know, food should never be mixed on a plate, <laughs> you know. And so perhaps that's the thing, but there's something that's there where you, like I said, you, you have the opportunity. It sucks that we're at a point where talking to a stranger is safer than talking to the people who are close to us. It creates a type of neurosis where it makes it difficult for us to become closely connected with even our close connections. If that makes sense. And so um, you start thinking about what that does to us psychologically in our neuroses, and what kind of problems it creates in our heads that strangers are that strangers can be closer to us than our own friends. It can make us feel alienated, isolated. It can make us feel alone. But that's also why you're going to find that people who have really deep connections with other people tend to be psychologically far more sound because you have those, out those outlets, those expressions. So <clears throat> I'd encourage you to think about it that, yeah, like, what if, none of these things are normal, but we seem to have collectively agree that we're going to pretend like they're normal. And then we're going to pretend to be these things, you know? Um, I wonder if anybody in here really is this thing. Or how many of you guys in here are, are anxious and depressed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for being honest, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I, I told you about my, my theory about the colors you guys are wearing, right? No, no. Oh, you said black. Oh, yes, I don't you look around, yeah, you look around the campus, and this is what you see oh. a lot of. And you look around, and if you're just like walking around, I, I have some friends now who I pointed this out to, and then now they're like, you know, after you pointed it out, I do see it everywhere. Like a lot of people are just wearing all black. Like, right? Yeah, but 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 the thing is that it's. I hate saying things like this, but. It's difficult to, to recognize unless you've been around it for a while. In other words, I've been on this campus long enough to, to see you know, these, kind of, these kind of trends that happen. And, and I can remember pre-COVID, and I now remember afterwards. You know, I can see a stark difference. And, and who knows, maybe I'm only seeing it because I'm calling my own attention to it. You know? But, you know, you guys are really anxious, worried and all that stuff. You know? I mean, like when all this stuff was, like when a lot of stuff was going down, I was telling a friend of mine, she was very concerned about every, everything that was going down. I was like, eh, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> you know, like when all, like for example, um, when the riots and things were happening last year, were happening in downtown, I asked my friend, want to go see the riots? You know, <laughs> and, well, but they're, they're going to be burning things down. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because I've been in riots before. I mean, I grew up in Los Angeles, for goodness sake. You know? I, I saw these things, and so it wasn't my first rodeo. It wasn't like it wasn't like it was terrifying and all that stuff. But I wanted to see what was happening because you're going to hear all kinds of reports about what was happening. It'd be better to be able to go there and see it for myself before forming an opinion. So I wanted to go see what was going on. I didn't want to watch a live stream, on, you know, from someone. <clears throat> and so you go check. Maybe you can go see that if you've experienced it before. It's not normal, but it's, it's manageable, you know. But if that's the first time you've ever seen something like that, it can feel like the world's falling apart. Like right now, looking at the world, I'm like, oh man, we got some issues. But I have some people who live a few, do a few doors down from me, they're older, and they shake their heads at me and they go, you weren't alive in the 60s. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but what happened in the 60s that was kind of more chaotic than now? And he just goes, uh, two Kennedys and a King were shot. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I guess you got a point. <laughs> You know, because it wasn't just rights, it wasn't just a strike, it was actual assassinations going on. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you get a point. So maybe, maybe, maybe we aren't at a point. And he's like, yeah, we survived that, we'll survive this too. You know, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll trust in that. You know, it doesn't feel normal. You know, maybe, you know, this doesn't feel normal right now. This, this, this doesn't feel normal now. Maybe if we can stay calm <laughs> and stay together on this, you know, maybe we can. Maybe we can get somewhere. Or maybe we can just reboot the whole thing, right? <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> real society hasn't been tried yet. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Complaints? Criticisms? Critiques? Oh, don't forget, October 22nd. It's tomorrow.